Hey everybody, this is David Ruff. I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada, and man, every day gets weirder and weirder. The Bank of Canada has now gone to Twitter to say we are not printing money. I mean, I don't even understand this actually is a joke, but let's look into it. Let's see what they're saying, okay? Let's jump right into the article. If we jump right into the article uh, that they're talking about, these guys are hilarious. They have resorted to going to, to Twitter now, and they're saying the Bank of Canada sets the record straight on printing money, in quotes. The central bank has now been using social media to engage the public on the economy. Now, you can go to this article. It is on the Financial Post. Uh, bank of Canada sets record straight. Just look up that uh, article right there. As we go into it... Um, it says, as the Bank of Canada tries to rein in red-hot inflation, the central bank is engaging in another fight. One against misinformation. Really? What are these lies that everyone's talking about, right? In recent weeks, the central bank has been using social media to engage the public on the economy. Really? They're now having to go to Twitter for this, explaining how inflation works, like we're little children or something. So... The, the you can go to their Twitter feed at the Bank of Canada and it says hashtag you asked us if we printed cash to finance the federal government. We didn't. <laughs> like separate line, separate, separate paragraph. We didn't. <laughs> These guys are too much. It says the only people who pay attention are insiders and market experts, and they're the only ones who actually understand how inflation is working. But of course, because they put out one tweet on Twitter, we're supposed to go and look at that. Unbelievable. Crazy. So this is what they go on to say. We bought existing government bonds from banks on the open market. Okay, we bought bonds. They're admitting to that. Why? This helped unlock frozen markets at the start of the pandemic. It lets households and companies and governments access funding when they really needed it. Okay, so they're saying they needed it. Sometimes referred to as QE or quantitative easing, it is a relatively new tool to keep money flowing when interest rates are already hovering around zero and can't be cut any farther. Okay, so they're saying that they did buy bonds they're saying they did do quantitative easing but they did not print any cash okay let's let's make it known right that we are not printing cash at all okay so let's go to this article over here investopedia you know a lot of people go to investopedia and and see what's going on there okay so if you go to investopedia and look up quantitative easing just to see what that is big word right all these pseudoscientists back in, uh, you know, when the last crisis happened, they were saying that quantitative is easing is great. We could just print as much money as we want, just invent as much cash as we want. The world it, it will never be a problem, really. It's been this way for thousands of years. Ancient Greece, hundreds, uh, what, 600 BC, Rome did this. All these nations did this. What Even look recently, Weimar Germany did it. As you print money, you devalue it. This has been tried over and over again. And somehow everyone believes, remember back just two years uh, before the health crisis happened, they were saying we could print money forever. Janet Yellen was saying the government's an eternal horn of plenty. Could just keep on producing. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's go to Investopedia. I want you guys to read it. So it's not from me. Quantitative easing. It says quantitative easing or QE is a form of monetary policy in which the central bank, like the U.S. Federal Reserve, purchases securities from the open market to reduce the interest rates and increase the money supply. Are, are we are we seeing that? Okay, so they buy bonds and securities, and that means like stocks and stuff, in order to reduce the interest rate and increase the money supply, bring up money supply. Quantitative easing creates new bank reserves, meaning more cash, providing banks with more liquidity, encouraging lending and investment. All right, listen, they're using a lot of big words here. What is bank reserves? Okay, what is liquidity? They are getting this money and putting it out on the market for, for mortgages and stuff. So 
I understand. This is kind of like trickery, guys. This is like a magician, you know, pulling a rabbit out of a hat. When we say the term printing money, we're going to be putting this in quotation marks, okay? Printing money. When I go and get a million dollar mortgage from the bank, did some like nameless, faceless guy be out there putting ink on something and stamping pieces of paper and handed you a million dollars in currency and then you took a wheelbarrow and wheeled it over to your lawyer? D did you do that? No. The way it happens is they just with a couple emails, boop, boop, you have a new debt put on your property. That's all online. So really, did they put the ink on a piece of paper, press it, make a dollar with it? Did they make a million dollars? Did they? Actually, they didn't print a million. So they say this, that term, no, we didn't print it, but they did invent it. No, they did not um, just get bucket loads of this stuff, but they did go buy bonds. They did go buy securities. They did increase the money supply. They did that around providing liquidity everywhere. So they did create the dollars. So let's go back to Investopedia, okay? Because this is important for everybody to understand, okay? If you go back to Investopedia, remember, quantitative easing is a form of monetary policy where they purchase securities on the open market, reduce the interest rates, and increase money supply. Print a lot of money, mean just create a lot. They send billions to the banks just by way of an email. Quantitative easing creates those bank reserves. Okay, so if we go down on economics, uh, what else? Does quantitative easing work? Now, this is straight from Investopedia. I'm reading it from there. It says there that though they thought that the quantitative easing got them out of the recession, it says results of quantitative easing are difficult to quantify. Okay, well, that's that's kind of tough, right, for us to, to see that. And then it says, while quantitative easing policy is effective at lowering rates and boosting the stock market, its broader impact on the, on the economy isn't apparent, is not apparent. Okay, so does it actually help the economy to print that money? You're sure it doesn't look so, according to Investopedia. Um, risks of quantitative easing. The number one risk is inflation. And it says here, this is interesting right from there, at the time lag between the increase in the money supply and the inflation rate is generally 12 to 18 months, 12 to 18 months. So if inflation is going to go up 12 to 18 months later, look what happened at the beginning of 2020 when everyone needed cash, they started printing at unprecedented rates. And look at us now, a ways later, inflation has been raging now. And it took a while to get through the economy. Think of water like um, dripping through a bunch of sedimentary rock. It takes some time for it to come through, but then it starts rushing out the other side. And so this always happens. And so is quantitative easing, is it a good thing? Is it a good thing? Maybe, maybe not. According to Investopedia, no. Okay, but as some people will say, some people will say it's not. Well, who does inflation hurt? Because quantitative easing always produces inflation. So who does inflation hurt? Inflation normally hurts middle class and poor class. Who makes a lot of money with inflation? Very rich class makes a lot of money with inflation. So it really depends which group that you're in on, on which side is going to win. Now, we have always been having inflation since we went off the gold standard, you know, 50 years ago. In fact, it started to break before that. But, you know, for 50 years, we've been having inflation. So how people can make money is if you know there will be continuing inflation, how do you make money with inflation? And that's why I think financial literacy is the backbone to everything, because you can use the financial uh, education to beat inflation and to make money off of inflation. The same reason that the rich make money off inflation, you could use the exact same strategies for yourself. So even though these times are going to be hard for the next couple of years, even Jerome Powell at, at the uh, meeting down in Wyoming, he said there will be pain coming for households and businesses and people. He knows that's going to be happening. But if we play it the right way, we can make a lot of money. Uh, Patrick Bet David always says you can add a zero to your net worth if you play this right. So if you were worth a million, you will be worth 10 million on the other side. If you're worth a uh, hundred thousand, you'll be worth a million on the other side. So pay attention to it. Anyway, 
I love you guys. I'm always looking out for you. I really appreciate it. Do you agree with this? Do you like quantitative easing? Do you think we should print more money? Do you think we should not print any more money? Really appreciate it if you uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Please remember to like, follow, and share with this. If you know one person, this helps. Even one. I'd appreciate it if you could send it to you. I love you guys. Have a great day.